The year for Gwyneth Ushla is Mission Antonet, August the Falter of Quig Good Owl Games, August and Yu beg me a brand new heir, Brian Brew, the High King of Ireland. And despite the fact that this game has an incredibly Irishy theme, here's a couple of other things I think you might want to know about it. Brian Baru is a game about becoming the High King of Ireland. You'll need to control regions of the board, all done through winning card tricks. But even if your cards aren't successful, there is still work to be done, where you can partake in religion and cement relationships with other families. And of course, we can't forget those Vikings. The game ends after three rounds, and then you'll see who should be crowned king. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Brian Baru has you becoming High King of Ireland and it's set in kind of an ancient Ireland, so about a thousand AD. Um, and this is a deeply rich and historical setting. Brian Baru was a real person who did in fact try and unite the different clans in Ireland under his own kind of banner. Um, and of course there are Vikings and monasteries in this which are fitting of the time too. Um, so yeah, this definitely has a real history behind it. Um, the main aim of the game is is kind of consolidating power in different regions of the map and that also feels very historical as well. Um, if anything the mechanics and the theme fit together surprisingly good here. Um, now is the theme a particularly deep and engrossing one? No but it does fit nicely with what you're doing. Everything here goes hand in hand. Now, similar tiles to this, well I'm not going to name the other Irishy game that involves area control in it um, that seems to have come up a little bit in relation to this title because I think they're very very different games. Um, if anything this one reminds me of Pierre Sylvester's other title um, The King is Dead where you are controlling areas of the map using cards in your hand but the trick taking element to this game gives it a much bigger scope than that one. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Brian Baru combines trick taking and area control on your route to kind of high kingness. Um, and the important part, I suppose, is the trick. This is the first thing that will happen in the turn. And for those of you unfamiliar with trick taking, basically it means you'll have a handful of cards. They will all be different colors or have different numbers. They're kind of from different suits. And you want to be the person who plays the highest number in the right suit to win the trick. Um, so if you look at the cards that you're playing with, this is where it gets really interesting. Normally in trick taking games, um, the winner is the person who gets some sort of reward. Not so here because each card has kind of three different options on it and if you win the trick you can do the action at the top of the card. So these are normally cool things like placing a settlement or stuff like that. But if you don't win you can also choose from option two and three or which are lower down on the card. Um, and these will involve things that will influence the board or maybe give you money or stuff like that. So that no one feels left out if you don't win a trick and in fact sometimes you may not want to win the trick to be able to get a different kind of reward. And I thought this was a really clever take on trick taking and it's one I personally really appreciated. Um, so what happens anyway if you win a trick or even if you don't getting to perform actions? Well this doesn't involve you engaging with the board. Um, the main thing you're going to be doing is putting out settlements as you're going to want to control as many zones on the board as possible. But there are other cool things to do too such as fighting Vikings and there's a reward for having fought the most Vikings and a punishment if you haven't fought enough at all. Um, you you can also kind of go down a religious route and eventually possibly build monasteries which make your towns worth an extra point or you can go up the courtship track and get married um, and of course your bride or groom um, will bring kind of different bonuses to you depending on who they are and what clan they're from um, and I, really, I thought that was fun as well. I love that there are both brides and grooms, thought that was a nice touch. Um, so overall um, like it's an interesting combination here between the trick taking and then the whole kind of board um, adjustment but I like how it's done. I think there's a lot of unusual and interesting touches here to make this game really stand out. Thing three on the table. So I was really delighted to recognize a map in a board game for once when I opened this up because it's a big and beautiful map of Ireland. Hurrah! Um, 
it's kind of been pointed out to me that maybe the map isn't the most accurate, but I think you'd have to be looking really close to notice that. Um, overall though, the game doesn't take up a huge amount of space on the table, but it is it is kind of big because the board is large, but your player portions are kind of tiny, don't take up really any space at all. So, you know, you have to be able to see the board, I guess. Um, now, set up and tear down for this is pretty fast and it takes about an hour for three of us to play. And I'm sorry, yes, this is a three player minimum. Um, the good news is Though that turns are really really quick so you know the game is very well paced it doesn't take long to play and the rule book is really good as well it didn't take us a lot of time to go from reading the rule book to playing the game which was you know nice um replayability wise here i think you're mostly relying on the trick taking portion because yeah it's going to be different and of course how people interact with the board and what cards you're going to play it changes things up too but there are some other um things that change when you play as well so for instance there are as a whole host of brides and grooms to choose from the number of vikings that come each round change as well so i don't think it's going to feel stale anytime soon thing four how does this game look and feel well i'm not the only one i hope out there who took one look at this cover and was reminded of like my history books in primary school um, where you learn about brian brew and other such famous irish people um and it looks just like this like um this is so authentically irish i i find it hard to avoid it so yeah it's definitely got that kind of appeal to me anyway maybe some other irish people will agree with me um the nice thing about the art though um is that it's really colorful and bright and vibrant um i really like the illustrations on the cards and things throughout the game and the map itself is very beautifully done it all looks very inviting um and kind of like happy and easygoing which i think suits it well um big shout out to osprey games here who i think have really been upping their game in terms of component quality in their past couple of releases and this one is no exception um the component quality here is really really good um so the, the game board itself is absolutely lovely um you've got these beautiful cards um there are tokens and things like that which i suppose are just standard cardboard um but overall i was very impressed with kind of the what you got in the box here it, it's nicely put together um overall i think this game will have a certain appeal to to people who are attracted to anything irishy um and this definitely has that in spades thing five is this game actually any good so i'm going to start this review portion off by saying i don't like trick taking games um i've played a number of them in different ways and different varieties and you know what just playing the card with the highest number to win just doesn't appeal to me um so yeah that might taint my review of brian brew a little bit however <laughs> despite all this i will say that this is the best version of trick taking that i have played um it's really really impressive how there is a feature here where nobody feels left out if you don't win a trick and that's usually the most boring part of trick taking games where someone you know wins the trick and then they get to choose the next kind of suit or high number and then they can win the next trick and it just kind of boulders along there um and in this version it doesn't matter whether you're winning or not because you're still doing things you're still achieving things um and i also particularly like the fact that there is a drawback to continually winning with big numbers um because normally if you win you get to place out a new settlement and it'll cost you a little bit of money but if you keep winning you can run out of money so you can't afford to pay for the settlement and if you can't afford to pay for it you lose victory points and that's a pretty horrible ratio um so we often have had times when we were playing where someone had won a number of tricks and then was very quickly trying not to win a trick um, and we were forcing them into it so they, they couldn't afford it and I, I love this dynamic style of play that this game has I think it's fantastic that the cards you have have um, are, can be used in so many different ways and everyone gets to feel involved no matter what's happening and of course you know your cards are influencing the stuff that's out on the board and this is really interesting as well because usually well always um if you win the trick you are basically you get to choose the next town you're kind of fighting over for with the, the following trick um and by doing this you're deciding where 
what places I suppose on the board are getting taken over or controlled and I think those are some really interesting decisions as well like do I feel confident enough to win this trick so that I can take this place I actually want do I feel like I'm not going to win a trick at all this round so we'll go to some other corner of the map I don't care about or will I put this somewhere that I know other people are fighting over and they'll use their best cards there um and I just I think it all fits together really well um like when I heard it first trick taking an area control I was a bit mm, but they work really nicely here and of course there's a bunch of other things you can do to your towns on the board that I really appreciate as well such as monasteries you can convert towns to vikings um as well for your enemies and of course getting married then affects certain things um so overall like this game is really well put together and really like well designed um now my the biggest drawback is the, the three player minimum. Now I'm kind of annoyed about that, but you know, that's just who I am. Um, but it also means that for the sake of this review, it's a little bit less in depth than I would have liked. So I've played three games of this with, <laughs> with three people all named Brian. Um, and so I thought I'd give you a little bit of Brian insight on Brian Brew. And this is what I heard back, which is that I wasn't really excited about this game when I heard you explain it or when we started playing, but I'd really enjoyed it by the end. Um, and I think that really does say an awful lot about this game, which is that on paper, it probably doesn't seem the most exciting, right? But the gameplay is, um, and it's really fun once you get into it and get going and get past that kind of initial hurdle. Um, and so overall, I guess what I'm telling you is that this game is three Brian's and, and one Antoinette approved. Do I think you should have Brian Baru, Hiking of Ireland in your collection? Well, I think if you want a really fantastic trick-taking game with a side dose of Irishness, then you really need to go and check this one out. You've been watching Good L Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Brian Baru, why not shout them off in the comment box below? Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.